Now why would you do this? Maybe there's a bunch of bad corn. It's got a fungus in it. Maybe it's the Starlink corn that was thrown out and recalled and fed the cows and everything. Maybe there's a bunch of other stuff, but hey, you can use waste agricultural products on this. Now the corn likes a higher temperature more than it does a lower temperature. Took me about two minutes to get it going, which I didn't want to bore you with. But you can see I'm melting my can down here a little bit. It likes a higher heat, definitely. And again, with the higher heat, you can, you're having a hard time seeing this on video. It's more of a blue flame with a little bit of yellow. And that's telling me we're getting a lot less long chain volatile hydrocarbons coming off and more short chain ones and more hydrogen carbon monoxide coming off. Because the composition of corn is different than the composition of sawdust. Uh, sawdust would have, a pine would have a lot more oils in them. But there you go, this is just a beautiful example of how good pyrolysis can get at higher temperatures. Now this is not partial oxidation, it's not steam reformation, it's not a water gas shift. All those terms are in the books that we talked about, especially the big blue hydrogen book, the $50 one, uh, worth every penny and more. And um, when I bought my copy I paid $500 for it, okay, buy your books. As my college professors used to say, buy your books. So anyways, uh, again, this is a fabulous example. I really want you to see what, how corn and other materials do this uh, from the other ones. Obviously the wood products, which I have more of here, have a lot different flame characteristics. You can actually see this flame is burning quicker. It's got a f higher flame speed to it. And um, it's very characteristic of hydrogen to do that. So there's probably a fair amount in there. It just isn't that beautiful? Just want to sit here and watch that. Okay, fine. Never mind, you don't want to watch it. Maybe you do, but we're going to go on to the next experiment. I just couldn't resist. I brought you back to show you the corn burning again. I'm setting up the next can with tree bark, and this is still going just beautifully. <laughs> it's wonderful. I love it. This is the stuff that you're not being taught in high school and college and in chemistry and you think energy comes from a pump and only from a pump? No. First internal combustion engines ran off of this. Before there was oil and refinery on a large scale, if you made an internal combustion engine and we got the books on it, you had to make your own gas, okay? This is over a hundred year old technology. This is nearly 150 years old. The hydrogen, excuse me, the hydrogen revolution was a hundred years ago, early 1900s, and there it is. I'm back, and as you can see, I turned off the corn. Uh, it was still burning. In fact, I melted it. Okay, here we go. What's this? This is a paint can, a one-quart paint can. This is a paint can with specially empirically, statistically significant precision holes drilled through it. But you could punch holes in it with a nail if you want. I just put five holes in here. I'll show you why there's five instead of one small. Here's tree bark. Okay. Go take it off your favorite dead tree. Or off a live tree of someone you don't like. But anyways, the tree bark going into here. Actually I got the tree bark at Home Depot. They use it as a mulch just because I didn't want to rip the bark off of any live trees in case you're wondering I'm sensitive. Uh, let's see, putting tree bark in, tree bark in. I'm gonna pack this thing full of tree bark. There we go, it's full of tree bark. Now, put the lid on. Take my handy dandy precision tool for Did I mention that in case someone else pirated this video, that we're knowledgepublications.com, K-N-O-W, well, you know how to spell it, knowledgepublications.com. If you can't read that, then you can't read my books. Just watch the pretty flames and entertain yourself. Okay, this is on top of there. Now, so, here, look, you saw me do all this. Nothing up my sleeve, no cuts, no edits, no nothing. This is just tree bark and a one-quart paint can with five holes in the top. And the reason I put five holes in is because 
if you put one small hole, it comes shooting out so fast that it won't burn. I mean, it will burn, but not here in front of you. Oops. <laughs> That's the label at the bottom of the paint can I forgot to take off. The price sticker just burned. And it's still burning. There's a new source of energy. Price stickers and their glue. So, we really want to let the air come out of here, okay? We want everything to get pushed out before we light it because this is a little bit of a semi-sealed container and if you light it and there's combustible gases in the air, it'll go boom and the can, the lid will go flying. That's why you wear safety goggles. Glasses do this outside away from anything combustible flammable, not when there's a red flag warning and with an adult. Or if you're an adult, you can do it with your dog, but keep the dog away. Uh, this is a steel can, not aluminum, so I don't have to worry about it so much, but when I heat it up, it's going to push the top out because the top and the can are expanding at differential rates and it forces the lid off. If you don't understand that, go ask your physics teacher. If they still call them physics teachers today. Ta-da! Not hot enough. See? Not hot enough. So, you know what that's basically coming out of there? Moisture, water vapor. Uh, more heat. I just turned heat up. Just because you don't want to wait for this to heat up. It's boring and you're tired of listening to me talking to you. Uh, cut to the edit scene. Yeah, one of the reasons I only put an inch of stuff in the other cans is so it heated up faster for purposes of the video. I'm beginning to see a little flame. It's got to dry. It's been raining here and uh, the tree bark was a little wet even though it's in a sealed plastic container it was a little wet. Okay I'm just going to pause this for you okay and I'll bring you back when the flame's going. Ta-da! And we have ignition! Oop, it went out. You want to see it come back real quick? Watch. See, this is what happens when you don't get enough heat because you're not insulated. Because I wanted to show you how to do this without insulation because...